Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, I'm starting a new series, series number two. It's my new mixed media art journal series, 24 pages in a cool journal that I made. But here is the first page called Happy Day. So there is the binder. I had sold these a while ago and I found one that I had left behind just for myself. And it has some really thick watercolor paper on there. It's definitely not 90 pound, it's the next pound. I think it's one, I can't remember. But really thick watercolor paper and I wanted to use a lot of watercolors in my next uh, mixed media art journal. They're just so freeing and very forgiving and always fun to work with. So decided I was going to do something real similar to a tag that I had done a long time ago and I never recorded it and I have a picture of it on Pinterest and it's on the Designs by Rim page and really gets a lot of attention and I thought you know what I love that page. I'm going to try and do something real similar to it. Um, and the last one was a tag. This one's a little bit different, but along the same lines and the same stamp. And that stamp is a Stampendous stamp. It is called, hold on, I wasn't prepared for that. Daisy Thanks is what it's called. And I just got it at like Joann's or Michael's. I can't remember which one. But I wanted to use the flower stamps and maybe the butterfly little ladybugs are so cute. And I thought, you know, I'm going to stick kind of whimsically, and I cut out some clouds out of a little piece of vellum paper that I had in my stash, and just cut poofy clouds and thought I would just have those in the background. Again, just kind of a whimsical style. I'm just laying it out, seeing how I'm going to like my layout. That stamp is really, really cool. But there's some boo-boos in here and things that I leave in, as some of you know. I, I like to leave in the things that I try that don't work because it's not a failure. It's um, I discovered a way that doesn't work. So, and I like to share the those things too with you. So, those are my watercolors, and um, I'm just going through my brushes. And for those that don't know, it is a will. Hold on. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not talking to the speaker. Um, I have a Windsor and Newton um, watercolor set, really kind of affordable, but I use it a lot. I love it, and I don't have like real expensive brushes or anything like that, so I just slap it down and go with it. And there's people who are, you know, professional artists and watercolor professionals that that definitely know, you know, a lot more about it. I just, you know, this is my place of zen and relaxation, and I'm gonna do what I want to do. It's probably not all the right um, formats, but honestly, I just don't care. <laughs> this is me time, and I'm going to enjoy it. So I just put in some blues, some greens. I like to do the diagonal thing just to have interest, more interest in the background. I want it to be nice and simple and very colorful. So I'm just slapping down some green, some blue, and then I'll do some red and then some yellow. I kind of fuss with the yellow because um, it wasn't as vibrant as I'd like it to be. And I should have started with my lightest color first. But I wasn't sure the direction I was going to go. So there's the red. And I'm just using the paints that are already on my palette and just mixing them to where I get to where I like them. So I toned down that red a little bit because it starts turning a little bit purple. And that's okay. I like it when the colors mix. I just think it makes it more interesting. I put some orange down there, but it wasn't quite what I was looking for. So cool thing about the watercolors is you just use a paper towel and sop it up if you get a color that you don't like. So I added some yellow down at the bottom and it just wasn't as vibrant as I wanted it to be and I needed to pull it up a little bit more and the more I tried to pull it the more it kind of blend it was getting into the red. So I wound up just sopping it up and then really getting that pigment on my brush and making it way more yellow. So and we should start with the lighter color first kind of get that on there and I didn't because I wasn't sure I was just going with it I was just doing it but once I sop it up and really get the paint on there and less water it really holds on to that pigment and it makes it look a lot better so hopefully you guys can see that so once I get it to where I like it I think it looks cool for my background I dry it up and then I have my little vellum pieces and what I did was I used my um, my pit marker, my white pit marker on it, and it's vellum paper. So as you as you might already know, once you get it wet or anything like that, it's going to curl up. But as soon as you take your heat tool to it, it straightens right back out. And I'll show you how that works. 
So if you ever want to cut some vellum pieces, I think it's really great for texture and in the background and, and some different elements that, that you want to do on your pages. But it can get a little tricky to work with, but just have, a, have some tweezers and your heat tool and I'll show you how it works. So as soon as I turn my heat tool on and I hold it up, it flattens right back out. So they're not the easiest to work with, but I think they're kind of unique. And I, you know, they didn't work out like I had hoped. I wanted them to be a little bit more textured and a little more fluffy, but I went with it anyway. So, and it flattens out pretty good. So I'm just playing around with my placement. Where I'm going to put my clouds, where I'm going to put my words. I knew I was going to use that stamp from this set called Happy Day. Well, the, the stamp is Happy Day, but... The stamp set again is Stampendous and it's Daisy Thanks. If you guys want to look that up, I've, I've had it for a long time. I don't, I don't know if you can still get it, but you can try. And there's the biggest block that I have, and it's not big enough for it. And I remembered I used a clipboard last time, like a real thick clipboard that I have. Um, it's an acrylic uh, clipboard, and I couldn't find it. So I thought, oh, no big deal. I'll just use the tin from my Ink Tense pencils. That should work fine. I thought, well, if I push hard enough, what's the difference? And I'm using archival ink because I know I'm going to use some other wet mediums on this. And I thought, you know, I can make this work. That's no big deal. I'll just push it right down. <coughs> I got really brave. Decided to stamp it right on my project. And thought, oh, I'll just flatten it out with my uh, acrylic block. Yeah, uh, fail. Didn't work. <laughs> but no big deal. When all else fails, grab your tissue paper. So all I had to do is stamp it on my tissue paper and then place it over it, kind of like tracing paper idea, and put it in place. No big deal. Disaster diverted. Averted, I don't know. It's so, I'm, I'm tired. I can't, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> but there it is. Much better image. And then I'll just put it right over the image that did not stamp well and put it on there, no big deal. So that was boo-boo number one and recovery number one. And then I got another boo-boo to share with you. And it was just from being, I don't know, I just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So I gotta adhere this down with something. So I got my uh, gel medium, my liquid gel medium. Once I got it lined up and I just slopped it right on there. So, hold on, here it goes. There it goes, right on top. Uh, what did I miss? You might want to put it underneath it, Kelly. Might be a good idea to put it underneath. <laughs> so, once I realized what I did, I can't lift it back up again. So, I just went with it and thought, I'm just going to soak it with the gel, <laughs> with the matte medium. I keep saying gel medium. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. It's just the matte medium by Liquitex. I just thought if I soaked it, it's going to go through and stick, and it did. It's fine. It's no big deal. I made it work. It has a whitewash look to it, just like tissue paper always does, and I think it, it just added to it, and it was fine. But yeah, I was really tired, apparently. So there's my stamp, my happy day stamp. And I did glue down those, um, those clouds with just scotch quick dry adhesive. And look at what I got, guys. I got the Fabric Castell pit markers. It's just a set of 12, but I love them. So I'll use those later, but yeah, I'm excited. I finally got the, a good enough deal for me to buy them. And I've had them for a while and been just jonesing to use them. But I pulled out my Ink Tense pencils. I love to color with those. Those of you that do not know them, they are very, very intense, pig, intensely pigmented pencils. And um, once you add some water, they do move like a really, really pigmented watercolor. And it is permanent once you get that down. So, and it really, is, these are just the absolute best. They are worth the money. I can't rant and rave enough about them. They're just the best ones that I have ever used. So I just, I just really put a bunch of the dark pigment at the base of the petal near the, um, near the center. And then just pulled the color outwards so that I would have a darker area and then it, it kind of bleeds into a lighter area. <coughs> you can use whatever colors you want. These are just the colors that I thought would look pretty. 
and I went with it. Kind of like a fuchsia color. And then I use the orange, and then again, dark at the base, and then I'll use my brush and a tiny bit of water on my um, on my nonstick craft sheet and just kind of dip it in there every once in a while and really control my water usage. If you get too much water on your brush, you're just gonna spill your color all outside of the area that you wanna color in. So, so soothing to me, coloring like this. I could sit with crayons and color for hours, but this is just way better for me. <laughs> So that yellow, again, so pigmented, I love it. So I'm really piling the color on. I'm pushing pretty hard with my pen. And then just blending that color all in. Once you add water, it really does make it even more vibrant. So love, love, love that yellow. So I just worked all that in, and I thought, ooh, I like the yellow, so I'm gonna kinda lighten up that orange just a little bit. So I added a little bit of yellow here and there all around to the outsides just to lighten it up. I want the flowers to look sun-kissed. And then for the center I used two shades of brown. Um, one was bark and then the other one was, I forget, but just two different shades of brown. The lighter one at the top because the sun is coming down on it and then the darker one at the bottom. I just kind of followed the, the flow of the stamp. And then just use some water, and you can see how vibrant that gets. Ugh, I love those. So that that yellow one really shows the brown, the lighter brown on top, and then the darker on the bottom. And then just kind of finish that off there. I might go back and do some white highlights on this page. I'm not sure. I really love it the way it turned out. It was so simple and and whimsical and just happy. So maybe I'll just leave it the way it is. And then I decided that my pink or my red was not quite red enough. Went a little bit more fuchsia, if you will. And then a little bit more yellow too. It's kind of, after it dries, it does kind of lose its vibrancy. So I just here and there just put pops of the color in a more vibrant, you know, I don't know. I just wanted it brighter. I think that helps. Definitely makes a big difference. <coughs> And then I was just cl coloring the stems. Got a little bit darker than I would like, so I just dabbed it right up. You can treat them real similar to watercolors. And then I decided that I was going to use some ladybugs and all that good stuff, but before I did that, oh, I might have cut that out. Hmm, maybe not. I used my Faber-Castell pit markers and I did some outlining around the clouds and I just used a blue color. It's the first time I'm getting to use them. Not crazy about the shading, but I just wanted to shade something with my new markers. And then I did wind up doing some shading around the flowers too. I'm not sure if I got that in my video or not, but I used like a gray, the light gray one I think, just to add some shadows around the, around the petals. Just a little bit more dimension. And then I did wind up stamping down the two ladybugs and then the butterfly. And then I'm showing you here with your um, ink tense pencils, you can get some water on your brush and then take the pigment straight from the brush tip. But because there's so much going around in the background, I just put a little water on the tip of the pen, of the pencil, sorry, and uh, put it where I wanted on my, um, on my image and then I can really control it and still keep it really vibrant. So hopefully you get, I don't know if the picture does it justice, but the, I mean how vibrant the colors are, but if you wanna, you know, really cover up background with some more opaque color, I mean, you're still gonna be able to see a little bit, but if you use just a little dab of water on the tip of your pencil, you'll really get a lot of pigment on there and it really is striking. So hopefully that will help you when you're you know, you stamp over your background and then you've got this background showing through your image and it just doesn't look right. And that has really helped me in the past <coughs> with having my image not have the background come through it. So hopefully that helps you. And that's that beautiful indigo blue I think that I'm using. So I've got yellow, blue, and orange for that butterfly. It's kind of like a monarch deal. <coughs> Excuse me.
and then once I wet it with the tip of the pencil with water then I do use my brush to go in and just kind of move it around evenly and get it into all the lines and same thing with the red because it needed to definitely color the background kind of blurred my little ladybug above my happy day because I wound up using um, the black intense pencil on there and it just smeared out a little bit I didn't let everything dry well enough and that was just too much water on my brush and that just comes with experience and I don't know practice but I didn't care I wasn't going for perfection I was going for relaxation and creating a page just for the sake of creating page just to relax definitely makes a big difference but I went a little outside the line I tried to fix it it didn't work it just got worse but oh well ladybug's got a mole <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to fix it and draw it in but eh, I was like eh, just leave it alone it doesn't matter all right I'm liking it it's looking good putting my stamps back and then what the heck did I do next obviously I gotta ink it of course I have to ink it there we go again just using archival I'm just barely hitting the outsides of it like I always always do again because it draws your eye towards the center calls all the attention to the center of your page really like the size of this book I wish I could get more. I really I only made about I think 15 total. I sold them within the first day of putting them online. I sold out of them. And uh, I tried to get more, but I just couldn't get the materials. I just got such a great deal on the materials and and I just can't do it again, unfortunately. But I got some people that want to get in that book, so hopefully you guys are creating beautiful things. But I thought I would use this to do the series cuz it's a book that I can actually use some dimension put some flowers in there some filigree pieces and things like that so there's plenty of room in this art journal book for dimension so there's a final screenshot thank you guys so much for watching more to come